Okay, so this is Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi 4. I'm using a 4 gig model today. Uh, it still doesn't work on the Pi 400 at the moment. In fact, let's go into the Discord and just show you what is working. So we've currently got Ethernet, 8 gig of RAM is supported or up to 8 gig, uh, depending on your Pi. Built in USB supports, uh, one display output, USB to audio, I'm using a USB sound card at the moment, USB to Bluetooth, uh, USB boot works but only from USB 2 uh, and also onboard Bluetooth is working as well which uh, was in my last video so if you go to my channel I've got a playlist uh, of Windows on Raspberry Pi uh, and this one here how to install WOR uh, so that was a big update because uh, x64 app support uh, became available on the Pi 4 and also Bluetooth audio as well and I was running it from SSD but only from USB 2 but I was getting good speeds so if we go back to the discord uh, you can see it doesn't work audio jack doesn't work USB to Wi-Fi dongles GPU although they are working on it proper SD card drivers well that's uh, a little bit out of date now because we we have got proper SD card drivers. Amir let me know through the Discord comments that there are some experimental SD card drivers and they actually work really well. Uh, so I'm using them at the moment and uh, I've found that it's definitely sped it up. I did a speed test before applying the SD card drivers and uh, I was getting some pretty slow speeds, 11.4 megabytes second read and 10.6 megabyte per second write. We'll do a test on that later on, but uh, it's, it's definitely faster. I can feel it's faster just by using it. Something that's also uh, improved a lot is this WRCP or control panel. And uh, it's a really, really useful tool for Raspberry Pi because it mounts the boot partition and it also does things like overclock and change the resolution. So these were things that we haven't been able to do for ages without having to uh, apply changes and also reboot and change settings in the UEFI boot, which is a, a little bit of a clumsy way of doing it, but it was the only way we had to do it. So you can see here on this main page, we've got processor information, uh, memory usage, and also disk speeds. Uh, the GPU is there because it's to be added in the future. Overclocking works incredibly well. I've, I've overclocked this to 2 gigahertz with, uh, I think I did the over voltage of 4. I might have done an over voltage of 6. But basically, you can put in here whatever you want. So if I do 2147 and hit apply, and then 8 and hit apply, which is a common setting I use, uh, it would just need a reboot, and that would do everything you needed. So then you would be overclocked. But also, this bit here, which is mount boot partition, is really useful as well because it means that the boot partition isn't usually shown in Windows 10 uh, and it's not the simplest thing to do to show it. So if I hit mount boot partition and then call this back up, you'll see that this will refresh and there you go. So now we have the boot partition and if we need to do any changes to the config.txt or do anything to that, it is already there. And this is particularly useful in the case of uh, being able to change the drivers. So to change the SD card drivers, which I've already done, uh, you need to download them from the Discord first. So let's go into the web browser. And on the Discord, uh, I couldn't find them at first, but they're actually here in pinned messages. And I've not really used the pinned messages before, uh, but it will come after a, after a second. It doesn't show anything, but it... Oh, I think you have to go to general chat, maybe. So if you go into general chat and let that update, once you're in general chat, if you click on this pin, they come up in here. And these are the two you need to download. So rpiefi.fd and piemc2.reg. So just click on the download link and it will download for you. And mine's already in my downloads folder. So if I right click here and go to open up downloads, so these are the two. So to do this one, you just double click, hit run, and say yes. And that's it. That's all you need to do on that one. But then you need to replace the rpiefi.fd. So what you need to do is go into the boot folder and delete the one that's there. As I say, I've already done this, so I'm doing it, doing it twice, really. Uh, but my screen capture didn't work for some reason. Uh, and then copy that and pop that in here and that's it and after a restart that will all be working and you will have the newer faster SD card drivers so let's close that down and close that down because it also mounts the boot partition it also gives you the ability to uh, change the resolution 
Uh, and this again was something that if you'd booted it up, you couldn't change the resolution without rebooting, pressing escape, doing, jumping through a few hoops. On this, all you do is, uh, so if I click 720 and do a restart, it will restart at 720. It's already at 720. But if I was, say I was trying to run an old game and the performance wasn't as good, I could drop right down to 640 by 480, click on that, uh, close down the, the uh, computer, restart, and it would come up at 640 by 480. But I'm not going to change that because I'm already running at 720, which I think is probably the optimum for Raspberry Pi 4 uh, running Windows 10. So there's also applications, and these are ARM-based applications which are designed to run on the Pi 4 through Windows. So things like VLC is a great program that's worth installing. Uh, obviously Edge is a great browser. Uh, there's a paint program and also Pi Monitor. So, so lots of good things in there. Uh, but this is going to get better uh, because uh, Amir on the Discord said that WRCP has been rewritten in C for ARM. So uh, it's going to have better performance in the future. But I really, really like it because the functionality that it does is just, just really, really useful. Now we did mention about the GPIO pins uh, and asked me to have a look at those, but I don't really do GPIO pins apart from running a fan and maybe some LEDs on the fan. Uh, I don't really use them, but what he said in here, uh, GPIO tutorial, first you select a pin by clicking on it from the right side, then you can set it high or low from the left panel, or you could pulse it. Slider is for how long to keep it on. And if you want to blink, you can click on set, then start, and it will blink your LED. Multitasking is also supported, blink plus manual control. So, as I say, it's not, it's not my thing, but if you're into GPIO pins, I'm sure you'll be glad that it's been added to Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi 4. So I need to do that speed test. Uh, I think I'm going to close down the web browser for that. Uh, and I've got this Parkdale one, and I just downloaded this, used it in a previous video. Uh, and it doesn't need to be installed, it's just the app uh, that's sort of freestanding. So this shows my drives, so there's the boot drive uh, and also the uh, operating system. So let's click on the operating system and hit start. And already I'm getting pretty much double the speed I was getting before. I'll go back, I'll, I'll copy these results onto the uh, text document that I've got to show what they're like. Okay, so we have some results. So 20.0 on the write speed and 22.6 on the read speed. So let's open up that document and paste those results in. And uh, you can see that it's nearly double. Uh, well, it is double on the uh, write speed, but it's nearly double on the read speed. So definitely better performance. So I need to save that because I wanted to check because I've had a comment from Sam Chow who said, I got more performance than the Kingston Canvas Go Plus 64 gig SD card by attaching it to a Pi 4 USB 2 port via a card reader. Throughput is comparable to your Kingston SSD on USB 2. So that will be interesting. So we maybe don't need to apply the SD card patch uh, if we're getting better speeds with an SD card reader. Obviously, if you haven't got an SD card reader, then you're going to use it in the SD card slot and you've got pretty much double the performance. But uh, let's do with the same speed test, but I'm going to boot this up from uh, an SD card reader, but still using the same SD card. Okay, so I need to shut that down and then reboot with the SD card reader. So shutting down, you can see the I'm using the official Pi case. I've got to do a test. I kept I kept meaning to do a test on this, but I never got around to it uh, with this fan. And I was going to compare it to the Pi Moroni, but I'll do that in another video. So that's not accessing the SD card anymore. So I can eject that safely. This is my integral SD card reader, so I'm going to pop the SD card into that and then pop it into a USB 2 socket. I'm going to unplug the sound card uh, to be able to do that. I'll pop the sound card back. There you go. So now we can switch off and switch on again and reboot. There you go. So it's booting up absolutely fine from USB 2. I think we'll switch over to screen capture now. Yeah, so unfortunately the USB didn't work properly. Uh, now this could be because I messed about and installed the SD card drivers twice. So I think what I'm going to do is reflash the OS back onto the SD card and then try and install it from USB and see how that goes. Okay, so I've put the SD card back in the SD card reader uh, in my Mac running Windows 10 and I'm just going to reflash the OS and try again and see how the speed test goes. Okay, so I'm back up and running. So this is a clean install and I'm using the same micro SD card, the Kingston card that I was using before, uh, but in a USB reader 
uh, and so now it's plugged into a USB 2 socket. I did try it in USB 3 again and uh, it wouldn't boot from USB 3, but in USB 2 it seems to be fine. So let's see if it's faster or not. So let's open up Parkdale, let it settle, and then hit start. It is quicker. So the write speed is definitely quicker. Okay, so the results are in. So read speed with the standard SD card was 11.4 megabytes. The read speed on this is 27.5. The write speed was 10.6. You can see the write speed is 27.2. So much, much faster on the USB card reader in the USB 2 slot. And it even tells you here that USB 3 device on USB 2 controller. And with the updated SD card reader drivers, uh, we had a read speed of 20 megabits. Again, the read speed is faster. Uh, 27.5 and uh, we had 22.6 right and you can see 27.2 so the fastest way at the moment would be USB 2 still uh, which surprises me because because when I did a test uh, with Linux and using the SD card reader compared to my USB reader it actually came out slower or oh, it's doing the random speeds now I think because this is faster the other one would crash unless it just takes ages to get around to it. So you can see the in and outs per second, which are pretty respectable as well. But uh, yeah, so interesting. And the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, Amir had asked me to do a video tutorial on how to install uh, 0.3.0. But uh, I use this guide by Luke from Raspberry Pi Projects and more, and uh, it did the job for me. Uh, it's got everything you need in there. It is quite a lengthy installation. There's a lot of things you have to do, but actually there was definitely enough information for anybody in there to do it. So the advantage of using this build is definitely that it's more tailored for the Pi. So lots of the things that make Windows slower have been removed. Things like OneDrive and Bing Maps and a few other things uh, have been removed. So it's just another alternative. Obviously you've got my version, uh, the previous video that I did on installation if you want to use the normal version of Windows. But to be fair, this one does perform better. Uh, and especially when you put that control panel in there for overclocking and changing the resolution and all those sorts of things, uh, it, it becomes really quite a joy to use. It is definitely getting better all the time. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.